If you want to make animated overlays in Keynote with a transparent center, much like I've got here, and if you know what I mean, you know what I mean, <laughs> then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. You caught me adjusting my headphones there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about animated overlays. Now, we all know you can make animated overlays in Keynote, and we all know you can make overlays with a transparent center, uh, much like I've got here in Keynote as well. But what you can't really do is make an overlay in Keynote that has all the animation in that uh, Keynote, where the animation is happening behind you, but that you've got a transparent center to it because you can take out the middle of a, a keynote presentation, you know, a, a shape or whatever, uh, but you can't take out sort of the stuff that is sliding behind it. Am I explaining that very well? If, you, if you've tried making something like this in Keynote and failed, it's because it can't be done. <laughs> it can't be done directly in Keynote. Uh, but you may not want to do something like this in Adobe Premiere Pro, for example. In Pre Adobe Premiere Pro, I'll have to make a video about how to do it in there. It is very easy. There is a built-in function, keying, and you just drop on the, drag it and drop it onto the, the video, and it will remove the green element from it, from it no problem. There's a similar thing in uh, Final Cut Pro as well. But the thing is, these are professional apps and you maybe don't want to pay $100 or whatever it is for Premiere Pro. And you maybe don't want to pay a subscription to Adobe Creative Suite of $50 a month or something like that. I think it is now. I can't remember how much it is. Uh, but you may not want to do that either. Uh, so if you just want to make a one-off overlay or a couple of overlays and you don't want to get into those sort of professional programs, how do you do it where you're using Keynote? Well, the answer is there is a little utility app that you can use to actually do the final step of removing the center. And it's an app that I've already talked about. It's an app called Permute. And Permute is used for uh, really converting files. So it will convert uh, video files from one format to another, audio files from one format to another, and so on and so on. Uh, but I mentioned this, and I also mentioned that you could use it for removing green screen. But then afterwards, I felt like, well, maybe I should have actually elaborated on that and told people how to do it. Because it's one of these little features of the app that is uh, really quite... Um, quite useful and almost like a hidden feature uh, for people like us wanting to make overlays for Ecamm Live or OBS or whichever your uh, video production tool of choice is. But by the way, if you are on a Mac and you're using OBS, can I just recommend Ecamm Live? <laughs> Ecamm Live is what I use to make all of my videos and I went down the OBS route and it's great. There's a great community of uh, people in there and, uh, you know, it's all open source and so on. But that means that you haven't got a business behind it actually driving it forward uh, who are financially incentivized to actually get it right and to make iterative uh, improvements to it all the time as the uh, developers over at Ecamm Live are and for me that uh, means a lot and there's also an absolutely wonderful community of people all using Ecamm Live as well so uh, there's already already people who have tried things that you want to do and uh, can help you out there as well so a great Facebook uh, group that goes along with the Ecamm Live uh, community as well and so that's a great place to be so I digress <laughs> Uh, let me get on to the actual process of uh, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make this overlay in Keynote because uh, it has got some more sort of animation than I'd done in the backgrounds of my previous overlay videos. And then I'll show you how to do the uh, final step in uh, Permute. And by the way, Permute is uh, a cheap utility app anyway, a low cost app, uh, but it is also available as part of the set app bundle, which I've talked about recently as well, which is just $9.99 for access to over 200 apps and Permute is one of them. So it's, uh, it's a great value, $9.99 a month subscription. <laughs> so let me get on into a keynote and I'll let let's get this thing built, shall we? <laughs> Instead of me waffling on. So here I am in a blank keynote presentation. I will uh, leave a uh, link to all of the other uh, uh, videos that I've done specifically about keynote and how to uh, make overlays in them uh, because I've covered a lot of this before. So I'll, I won't go into too much detail on all of the little things that I'm doing, but I will just uh, sort of build this out and uh, let you know what I'm doing as I go along. So first of all, uh, to recreate what I'd got in my uh, overlay that you've just seen, uh, it's basically got a background image, and the background image is this. 
and then we've got a border around it and by the way often in the other videos I've mentioned about making this the slides transparent background we don't need to worry about that in this case because we're going to actually do the transparency outside of Keynote in Permute so here I've got this I'm going to just give it a, get a little shape and uh, by the way normally for my videos I don't do any preparation as such I just kind of sit down and do them on the fly but uh, with this one I've actually had a dry run obviously because <laughs> I've already made an overlay haven't I so I'm basically going to now take those steps again and recreate what I've already done and it will be a little experiment to see if this actually makes it run any smoother or not <laughs> and I'm guessing not to be honest but we'll find out so uh, what we want to do with this is I need to give it a size so I'm going to come up to here and we want to change uh, the format and then we'll come to arrange we're not going to arrange it but it's more the, uh, the size we want to change so I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080 or actually 1820 by 980 and then I'm going to put the alignment 50 points from either side so I'm going to just adjust the size there and then the position of it relative to the uh, basically relative to the top corner so now I've got this shape that is uh, sitting in there let me just get this one a little bit different shape as well <clears throat> the background is not going to fit perfectly but if I put it like this it at least will align with that corner just so that we can see what the uh, the overall slide size is that we're working with a little bit easier and now what I'm going to do is uh, let me type that <coughs> uh, whoops there we go can't actually zoom in much more than that <coughs> uh, so in the uh, top corner if you want to adjust the radius because I used a uh, the shape I used just quickly <laughs> I said I wasn't going to go through every step but I should at least mention this I used the rounded rectangle tool that's what this is and so in the top corner you've got a little green uh, sort of uh, handle if you like little green circle and you can drag that in to make the radius uh, whatever you want so I'm just going to make that something like that so that is now the sort of shape of our border and then I'm going to change the uh, the actual outline so the border line so I'm going to come down to border and put a line and then that's actually already on my uh, color because I've just done it once already <laughs> but otherwise you could change the color in there make the border a bit thicker perhaps and then the fill color now this is what we're going to be keying out later uh, but it doesn't need to be green you can actually replace any color so um, what's more important is how different the color is to the color immediately surrounding it because or any color any other color that you've got in the image for that matter because it will remove that color from anywhere so we don't want blue because it's maybe a little bit too close to the blue in there uh, we also probably don't want green because the green's quite close to the yellow isn't it so we want something that's more of a contrast to that uh, black's obviously a very big contrast but again we've got some more black in here as well so let's just choose something that's a real contrast uh, like red for example that's quite a contrast to the yellow isn't it so this is all going to be removed outside of keynote in permute afterwards so next i'm going to add in these shapes so just to remind you what it looks like we've got these sort of shapes that move in and we've got the two central ones moving first and the others follow a little bit behind them and then there's a sort of light shimmer if you like that goes across the screen and then there's another one and then the yellow bars disappear so that is what we're going to build out now and I'm going to show you how I did that and I'm going to also write a wrong here because there was something I mentioned in one of my other videos about uh, removing uh, parts of images and how you need to do that in um, uh, in preview using the instant alpha tool but actually I'm afraid I was wrong you can actually do that in here for some things for shapes at least not for uh, image images which I believe is what we were doing anyway before but then never mind you'll see what I mean in a moment I'm just uh, waffling on rather than just actually showing it you at the time that I come to it <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm basically just going to make these shapes that sort of fly in from the side but what we actually want is we want something not like that but we want something I'm just going to hold down the alt key and duplicate this one so now I've got two shapes that are the same and I want this just this piece here really I want this piece that is uh, like the first shape with the second shape cut out of it and that is the bit that you can actually just do in here you can go to format shapes and lines and then you can either combine the shapes together uh, but we're going to use this uh, subtract shapes and then you can see it's basically cut the top one from the bottom one so now we've got this shape so now with this shape what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color of it to uh, not that color I want my uh, this yellow color that I use 
And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a drop shadow to it as well. We could have a, add a border, I suppose, but I'll just leave it with a drop shadow and the offset to zero. That looks about all right to me. And then I'm going to duplicate that. So we've got two of them. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. And by duplicate, I mean I'm holding down the Alt key. And then I'm going to rotate it by holding down the Command key when I'm hovering over that little corner. Rotate that around about 180, something like that. There we go. Doesn't have to be exact, does it? There we go. And then I'll just duplicate that again. So now we've got those those sort of two, um, those four, <laughs> those four shapes. And I'm going to move these two in. And bear in mind, this is all actually going to be behind the um, the the red background. In fact, let me do that now. And I've got this panel open. And just in case you don't have that open, uh, that would be in uh, View. Click in the View menu in the top left there. And then that you can choose to look, like look at the slides. So you can have the slide panel, but we've only got one slide, so we don't really need that. But you can also show the uh, object list. And so now you can see we've got these four shapes, and then we've also got the uh, the background and then also this red box which is basically going to be the, the the frame or the border around us in this shot so i'll move that to the front now so now we've got these pieces at the uh the, the background is now all behind the the frame so the next thing we want to do is actually animate in these uh parts here so i'm just going to click on all of them and then i'm going to go up to the top and i'm going to click on animate and then add an effect and we want to build in not build out so add an effect and for this I'm just going to have these all move in. So there you can see they're all moving one after another but they're coming from the wrong sides or at least two of them are. So first of all I'll make that a bit quicker. So I'll come down to the speed here and I'll make this 0.5. But then I'll just deselect these two and then with these two I'm going to have instead of them coming uh, left to right I'm just going to click in here change that right to left. Now what I also want to do is if I bring over the uh, build order second bring that over here there you go so this is the order of these all happening now at the moment uh, these are all happening uh, in the presentation because bear in mind this is presentation software all of these different things here are happening uh, on click so that means that if you were doing this as a presentation you'd click the button and it would move one and then the next one the next time you click but we want these all to happen automatically of course don't we so what i'll do here is i'll just come down to all of these and then I'll say happen with previous build. So now this one's happening with build one and they are all happening with build one. So that's what they call these different animation sections. Each one is a build. So here we've got build one, two, three, four. Uh, now what we want to do is actually have the outermost two coming in slightly after the uh, other ones. So let me see which one. This is the inside one. Move that up to the top. In fact, that's the top one. That is the outer one. This is the outer one and that is the inner one so let me move these around a little bit so that's going to happen uh, with build one this one we're going to have with build one but we're going to put a bit of a delay in so 0.2 seconds and then this one the same so now they should come in uh, like that so that looks pretty much like i would got it done before doesn't it and next what we want to do is have them build out I'll add on the sort of light shimmer thing that I had in there I'll add that in afterwards but for now I'll just click on all four of those and then I'll go up to uh, build out and then add an effect and then this I didn't actually have move out I use this one cube which is basically like it would revolve almost uh, sort of <laughs> uh, but you don't really notice the full effect of it but it just give it a nice effect anyway even though that they are sort of behind that central uh, red part so what I'm going to do is have these all happen with previous and I want to change the timing of it as well so I'll just make them a bit quicker about half a second they looked a bit too slow this isn't all guesswork I've just built one of them so <laughs> <laughs> they look too slow when I did uh, one second before so now I've got these all happening at exactly the same time uh, with build 5 with build 5 so I'm just checking here that these are all happening with build 5 so there we go so now uh, this one we probably want a bit of a uh, delay on that so this one can happen after build 4 but we probably want it to happen after say 2 seconds or something like that so now if I preview this you'll see that they come in and then there's a bit of a pause for two seconds and then they go out in fact what I've got there is not quite right because those two on this side what I forgot to do was I changed the direction from left to right 
need to change that right to left because now they'll just disappear into the center. So I'll try that again. There we go, let's see how that looks. There we go, that's kind of what I had it done doing before. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that sort of shimmer that goes across it. So if you just have a look what I'm talking about, it's that sort of flash of light that goes across the screen. Actually two flashes. Uh, so let me come back here. All that is, is that is a uh, rectangle. And I'm just gonna make this bigger. Like that. It doesn't have to be exact or anything. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna give it a graduated fill. So instead of a solid color, I come back here and I go to format. And then here I put gradient fill. Uh, but we actually want advanced gradient fill. Uh, just a gradient fill is going from one color to another, whereas we actually want multiple colors. And look at that, it's actually got it in from where I did it before, hadn't it? <laughs> Let me just get that out and show you exactly how to do that. Because uh, that's cheating really, isn't it? If it just remembers what I'd got it as before. Uh, so, just pick two random colors. There we go. So when you actually apply a an advanced gradient fill as a default, it will be just a two colors. And what we want to do is we want to have it going from white at one end to white at the other end, but also adding in some transparency. So I've got those set as white, and then I want to set another one in the middle. So all I'm gonna do is uh, we've now got this these two colors set at either end. I'm gonna just click into the middle and it's added another one in. And now what I can do is I can adjust the transparency of each of these ones. So I'm gonna to go to this one first, and I'm gonna set that transparency in our Mac color picker all the way down to transparent. And you can see how the side of it is now, there's the edge, but it's actually transparent there. And then I'm gonna click on the other side, and then I'm gonna move that one down to be transparent as well. So that is the uh, graduation fill there, graduated fill, gradient fill. <laughs> And the middle one actually is still fully uh, opaque. So I'm just gonna move that down to about 50% as well. So now what we've got is something that is uh, uh, basically mainly transparent with uh, white. So the effect that that's gonna have is if I just turn this slightly on its side, as it goes across here, it's basically just highlighting a part of it. And in fact, if I put it behind that rounded rectangle, like that, it's uh, it acts as like a little shimmering light. And what you could also do is, if you want to, <laughs> you could also duplicate this. So hold down Alt and have like that. And then in fact, we're gonna have like a sort of double flash of light, but that's moved above the red one. So what I want to do is just group those together so that they animate at the same time. So I can right click on that and uh, select group. So now we've got a group and if I put those bit underneath there, you can see how as this moves across the screen, it gives a little sort of flash. So in order to actually animate that across the screen, what I'm gonna do is come back to my animate and then I'm gonna add an effect, but I don't want uh, an in, um, a build in or a build out. I just want an action because it's just gonna do one thing, which is move across the screen. So I'm gonna click on action and then I'm gonna click uh, move. And it hasn't moved very far, but what you can see is it's got a line now with a starting point. So one here and one here. And if I just click this one and drag it across to here, off the screen, this is the path that it's gonna move. It's just gonna move from that point to this point. You can get quite clever with paths and start adding in, uh, you know, like curved paths and things like that. But for this case, all we want to do is just it move in a straight line across the screen, basically. And we also want to adjust the time, maybe, the, uh, 0.5 seconds, I can't actually remember what this one was. Let me have a little look. That looks about right to me for a quick flash. And uh, what I also did was I actually duplicated this because uh, I had a sort of double, double flash in there. So I'm gonna duplicate this whole group now. And when you duplicate something that has an animation as, uh, assigned to it, then it does actually copy the animation over as well. So we've now basically got two instances of this flash. So if I come over to my build order again for the animation, uh, you can see that those are both there. So this one is the first one, and this one is the one that I duplicated. And what I need to do is I'm gonna move this up into the middle of here, uh, because I want that to happen uh, actually probably with build one as well. Let me just put a bit of a delay in there. 
And then this one actually happening uh, directly after that group. This should all be make perfect sense in a moment. <laughs> Uh, so how much delay do we want between the build in and the build out? Mm, I reckon about two seconds, something like that. Uh, and this one, then we want to have that happening with build six. So let's have a little look now. It would help if I zoomed in so we could actually see it. So now we've got those moving in, the thing moves across the front and then there's a pause and then that shine moves across again and they move out. I think I've probably got that a bit dimmer than I had it in my other one, but it doesn't really matter. It's just to prove the uh, point. Let me just drop that down a little bit as well. Just watch that one more time. There we go, we've got the flash goes across the screen and there's another one and then it builds out like that. And then that one, we don't have any delay in that. So, uh, that is basically our animation. I think that's all right. That will do for the purposes of this because <laughs> I'm sure you're not going to necessarily just completely uh, copy this uh, animation. Plagiarism is a horrible thing. And uh, <laughs> I just totally plagiarized uh, Elysio. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me have a little look now what we're going to do. We're going to export this as a video. So I'll come down to uh, file and then we're going to go to export to movie. So I'll click on that one. And before when we were exporting as um, uh, with a uh, transparent background, I always mentioned to make sure that you have Apple ProRes 444 selected. But here it doesn't actually matter because we're going to be converting it anyway. So I'm just going to leave that one like that to prove the point. Uh, now slides, we've only got one slide so we can select all slides. But one thing we want is this is going to be cycling round and we want there to be a uh, a pause between it going from uh, the uh, the animation coming in and going out and then before it comes in again. And uh, we haven't actually built that into the animation, but we can do that here because we've got the pause between it coming in and going out, but we haven't got the pause between it repeating the process because this is going to just cycle over and over and over in our overlay. Uh, so the way that we do that is we can just change this here. So this go to next slide after, that's basically going to build in a pause at the end of the video. So whatever uh, whatever we put in here is how long they'll be just fixed on that blank blank slide without the, uh, the sort of animated components, if that makes sense, <laughs> without those in. So that's how long there's going to be between it cycling. So let's put that as five seconds. And then I'll click on uh, next. And then what I'll do in here is uh, it will bring up this. If I put this to keynote demo, and then I'll just call this uh, overlay demo. Uh, so export that. So that's now exporting our little movie. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear some space <laughs> and uh, probably just shut this down for a moment while I get up permute because if you remember from the video I did about permute I'll leave a link to it permute has got this really complex user interface <laughs> that, that's the uh, the user interface for permute now just one second so as I uh, say permute is intended really for uh, converting files from one thing to another so you can just literally drop a file on in fact if I just show you uh, that overlay demo so this movie file if I drop this into here it's identified the type of file that it is and I can just come up here and click and I could change this into any one of these uh, types of, of file. So uh, that's the way it normally works is just drag on a file, convert it into something else. If I dropped an audio file, it would be able to convert it into all sorts of different audio and so on and so forth. Uh, but that's not what we want to do. We want to use some of these extra little built in features. And as I mentioned in the other video, but I'll just go through it again. You've got these uh, little things, uh, this little area down at the bottom, which is called uh, Permute Workshop. And the way that you activate these extra things is you actually come up to the Permute Preferences and click on that. And then here you've got various different things like you can apply filters to uh, PDFs uh, and you can do things like PDF size reduction. This is another great little thing that it does. If you've got a big large PDF, you just drag it and drop it and then it will just spit out a uh, smaller file size. Uh, this is the one that we're actually going to use though. Color replacement replaces a certain color in a video with another color. 
and we're going to replace it with a transparency. That's the uh, the little trick here. Uh, but there are also these other things, which I, some of them I use, some of them I don't. You can use it for editing met metadata, uh, merging PDFs, uh, dropping a PDF and it will pump out a load of images from every page. So if you want to convert your PDFs into images, there's that as well. Uh, some text to speech stuff, text encoding and so on lots of different things track export so you can split out audio tracks from video and so on and it's just a really good little utility that you just drag on the file and it'll just do these little uh, tasks that otherwise you might have to have a little fiddle about in some other app to do them but we've got this here and uh, so just i've just come out of that a bit too quick jump the gun there <laughs> so here you can see the ones that i've got selected i've got these little ticks next to them so i've got this one color replacement has got a little tick next to it so if i uh come out of here now and that to get into to access those things you click in this little uh button here and that opens uh let's just come on a different screen it opens this thing. So these are all those ones that I've just had uh, ticked in that little preferences window. They're all here. So these are the ones that I use, but we're going to use this color replacement. So you come down to the color replacement. And then what I do is you come over to where it says the color. And at the moment it's set to green, but we want to set a custom color. And then what we want to do is come over to our color picker and where's that opened up it's open up here and what you can actually do is i have got the video on another page so if i just come and click here i've just selected the red color then the target color is what is going to change that color too so what we want to do is come into here and it's already done actually but you just want to make sure that the opacity is set to zero so if i was to come into black for example just put the opacity right down to zero and then I'll close that now the default here is 0 0.2 that this is the tolerance so it's how much of a uh, I suppose the uh, the difference between the two colors like what the the tolerance is between those uh, this is not a scientific thing but I found that 0.3 works a little bit better at uh, getting out the edges and so on but uh, I don't even know that that's point three of what this is just me playing around with the app that is what I've found so that's what I'm going to tell you uh, so then all you do is you just drag in the file so this is our overlay demo file and what you can see is I've dragged it onto there but you can see it behind it it's actually popped it into the permute window and now you can drop multiple files into here uh, but now you just click on the play button or the little button that looks like a play the start button and if you've got multiple files in here you could do them one at a time or you can just do the whole sort of batch and you can see that it is saying that it is color replacement so i'll click on that and then it will take a little minute or two your mileage may vary in terms of speed <laughs> depending on what you've got going on on your uh, computer at the same time and that is now going to basically export it into the same folder as the original file uh, which is somewhere here we go so I'll just drag this one over one second this is what this is where editing would come in isn't it but uh, there and that little sound means it's done it now what you can see is it's put this in the folder so there is our original file with the red background and if I just go up here this is the new one that it's created and look at that <laughs> it hasn't got the uh, the background but it has got all of the animation going on behind it so that now I can just bring over to uh, uh, here and in fact what I could do this is dangerous isn't it I'm going to unlock my scene I'm going to unlock uh, this one hide this one whoops I don't want to hide that one this is I said it was dangerous didn't I I, sp I said it was dangerous and look what's happened let me just drag this onto here there you go and that is the overlay that we've just made and i've just dragged it onto the scene so i hope you have found that useful because when i found out that you could do that in permute i just couldn't believe it because it's it's so much easier than uh, uh it's not it's not hard to do it in Final Cut Pro or in Premiere Pro, but it's just one of those things that you've got to open up an app and you've got to do all of this sort of stuff. Whereas with this one, the beauty of it is if you make 10 overlays, you can just drag them into Permute and then it will just spit them all out for you and you don't have to go in and do each one one by one in some sort of professional app or anything like that. So if you found that useful and it is 
<laughs> made you as happy as it made me, then please go and uh, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you get notified whenever I make any more videos as well. Uh, and that is about all for now. But shall I just go back to that other overlay just for a moment? There you go. <laughs> so I've got some more great videos coming up next. So check those out in this playlist. And I'll leave a link to all my Ecamm playlist down at the bottom as well. Have a great day.